this opportunity uh, we have a team of uh, team from uh, gst department myself i am krishna mohan superintendent from uh, gst cell secondary commissioner and accompanied by sri radha krishna rao garu he is a superintendent uh, who will be taking uh, a session for you all and uh, any doubts will be answered by shri p ravindra garu i think uh, you must be knowing uh, him well because he earlier worked here in uh, kapra range so let us uh, start the session sir. good afternoon my name is radha krishna rao chapnat gan so everybody is comfortable with english that's good huh okay so thank you and it is more than one year since gst is implemented so and we are all more comfortable now as uh, when compared to july 1st 2017 isn't it everybody is comfortable na but still so people are expressing some difficulties written difficult a little bit especially filing of gstr1 and gstr3 b so briefly we'll cover briefly we'll cover and uh, evable that concept is the latest entry enter into the gst system so we'll briefly cover about evable system also so we'll take around 45 minutes to 1 hour uh, for um, discussing these two ppts afterwards okay any issues are there uh, we will interact ravindra is also there krishna mohan is there dc madam is coming so i'm here we'll uh, we'll have that interactive session after this continue with your presentation and then uh, let us not take any questions in between sure sure yes let, let it yeah. go on then after that interaction session at the end he is correct because uh, the time available is also very short so repeat the middle of the discussion that the problem is and that is happen right out and we are going to question number that note just go as we move on please uh, note down your points me personal problems issues unte kuda no me industry sambandhinchi personal problems unte kuda note just go we will discuss we will take up those issues at the end if any difficulty is there we will uh, take those uh, issues and we will respond to you can so so returns returns are set of auto populated most of it, it was intended in fact the beginning of uh, the implementation of gst it was intended that most of the returns are auto populated from the invoice data we upload of course the process is going on so in filing the returns gst practitioners can also help us and there are gst suvidha providers at the same time gst in is the main website that is a common portal we can take the take itself and you can approach uh, gst practitioners or gst uh, suvidha providers also even if there are no transaction during the month you have to file a nil letter you cannot avoid because government should know whether you have any transactions or not isn't it what are you doing so unless you file the previous month's return you cannot file the current month's return that was the original intention but in case of gst r1 people are able to file gst r3 b is not allowing it is not allowing so late filing fee was originally planned at 200 rupees per day now it is reduced to 20 50 rupees per day 25 plus 25 in case of nil return it is 20 20 rupees 10 rupees plus 10 rupees so these are the main um sections as far as returns are concerned section 37 that deals with filing of gst r1 return that is outward clearances 3b um, this uh, section 38 is for filing gst r2 return that is for um, credit in inward uh, receipts are mentioned there 39 is for gst r3 return we are not filing gst r3 we are filing gst r 3b it is a temporary return Okay, for, uh, section 40 deals with first return. First return means, for example, 
you have taken registration in the month you, you have, your liability starts let us say on 20th of the 20th of january you started your business on 20th of january you can apply for registration within 30 days from your liability from the date of your liability so you applied for registration let us say on february 10th isn't it and your registration is granted after 3 days february 13th that means you have made some supplies from january 28th to february 13th the date of registration but you cannot file letter for the month of january because you you uh, do, you do not have any registration for the month of january you cannot file letter for january your first letter starts in the month of january february only even if you file the first letter for the month of february you have to give the details of supplies made during january january 20th to january 31st those details also you have to mention in your first return that means the return for the month of february that is what section 40 says section 41 deals with claim of input tax the provisional credit provisional credit means till the system matches your receipts and the credit taken of course that system is not really now it is not available it is in the offing so they will implement any day so till the system matches your credit with your receipts till then it is provisional credit only but it is accepted by the department also you can make use of it if there is any difficulty afterwards that will be set right section 42 section 40 that is uh, matching of credit with uh, the output tax liability of the supplier 44 is the annual letter the annual letter is filed before 31st december subsequent to the financial year for example for the year 17 18 annual return has to be filed before 31st december of 2018 if there are any errors or uh, inconsistencies in the monthly returns filed by you you can make good in the uh, 44 section 44 annual return that is gstr 10 that is not yet announced by the government I, we had that it was uh, approved the performance is approved in the recent 28th gst council meeting that will be announced and we have sufficient time to file them final return is a return filed by the person whose registration is cancelled this return has to be filed within 90 days from the date of cancellation once registration is cancelled your liability doesn't end there till you, it continues till you file the final return if you don't file final return within 90 days from the date of cancellation again you will be issued notice under under gstr 3a gstr 3a notice with, that is section 46 and the same section 46 that notice will be given and your liability will be assessed by the department section 47 is the late fee we have seen that so but we are not going to discuss all the returns so section 37 and section 39 will discuss section 39 is about gstr1 section 39 is gstr3b very fastly we will cover and these rules 59 to 84 deal with filing of returns as far as gst rules are concerned so these are all various written gstr1 2a2 of course there are no 2a2 now that is not discussed that will cause more confusion if they implement it then we'll go to that and after 3b gstr4 is for composition suppliers the quarterly return gstr5 is for non-resident foreign taxable persons 6 is for the ISD input service distributor these are the main returns gst practitioner can help you in filing these returns section 37 gstr1 38 GSTR 2, 39 GSTR 3 or 3B, 44 annual return, 45 final letter. Even if the returns are filed by the GST practitioners, the responsibility lies with the responsibility for correctness of the data lies with the taxpayer. The taxpayer, you cannot say that sir, my tax practitioner has filed this return, I don't know. You cannot escape that. You are, you are liable for the correctness of the, you are responsible for the correctness of the data. So, GSTR 1, this is the details of the outward supplies made by you. This is a monthly return. In case of the turnover, annual turnover less than 1.5 crores, you will file, your, you have the option to file quarterly return. Of course, if you want to file monthly, you can file, but you have the option to file. In that return, table 4 deals with the outward supplies made to business people, B2B, B2, business to business, including the special... Um, Recipients like UN, UN holders, that means diplomatic missions and international finance organizations, United, uh, United Nations organizations. So, those clients also covered in table 4. Table 5 deals with 
Interstate supplies, interstate supplies, please see, in, in, not inter interstate supplies made to unregistered persons where the invoice value is more than 2.5 lakhs. It doesn't accept even 2.5 lakhs. It accepts only 2.2 lakhs 50,000, 1 rupee. It doesn't accept 2 lakhs 50,000. More than that, okay? And table 6 is, deals with zero, um, zero rate of supplies. Exports, supplies to SCZ and also deemed exports. 6A, 6B, 6C, there are 3 subtables in table 6. Table 7 deals with taxable supplies made to unregistered persons. You see, if you see table 4, table 5, this is the supplies, interstate supplies made to unregistered persons where the invoice value is more than 2.5 lakhs. Whereas, table 7 deals with any other supplies made to unregistered persons, whether it is interstate or intrastate, anywhere. Why there are two wells, we will discuss. You see, in table 5, you have to give invoice wise data. You have to give invoice wise data. Whereas in table 7, you, get, you have to give rate wise data. For example, you have made supplies to, supplies of, uh, let us say, 5 lakhs to unregistered uh, taxable persons. There are two different rates. Even if you issue more than 100 invoices, only two entries will come in table 7. Whereas in table 5, you have to give invoice wise data. Okay, now? Here if you see, uh, this rate wise, you see, this rate wise data you have to give in table 7. So table 8 is related, exempted, non-GST supplies. Table 9 is for the amendments made in the previous uh, month return as far as invoices are concerned. In case of debit note, uh, debit note, credit notes, current month returns also are given and amendments are, are also given in table 9. There are three subtables again, 9A, 9B, 9C. And table 10 is the amendments to taxable outward supplies to unregistered persons. Of table 7, table 7 means less than 2.5 lakhs and also interstate supplies. Even if the interstate supply value is more than 2.5 lakhs, that comes in table 7 only. In case of interstate supplies where invoice value is more than 2.5 lakhs, that comes in table 5. Okay? So table 11 is uh, uh, regarding advances received and adjusted. Advance received during the current month, also advance received in the previous month and adjusted this month. All those details comes in Table 11, there are again two subtables, table 1 and table 2. And table 12 is the HSNOI summary. So how many HSN codes you have? So HSNOI summary you have to give. Table 13 is very important. These are the uh, de details of all the documents, whether invoices, credit notes, debit notes, receipt voucher, payment voucher, refund voucher. Can anybody tell what is receipt voucher? Huh? Advances received. And payment voucher is? No, 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 no. Payment voucher is given by the person, by the taxable person who pays duty under RCM. For example, you are an unregistered person, I purchase from you, I have to pay duty GST under RCM. So when I pay the amount to you, value, I don't pay GST to you because GST is um, paid by me under RCM. So when I pay the value to you, I will issue payment voucher. So that payment voucher I have to mention here. Refund voucher, when the advance, part of the advance is refunded or entire advance is refunded, then refund voucher is given. So delivery chalan, all those things, okay. Okay, these due dates you are all familiar. Um, this is very good uh, offline tool, return filing tool is very good. It has so many features and it is working very well. I have seen so many times it is working very well. When the in number of invoices are the more than 500, I suggest you use this only because you cannot modify the details online. You have to download the data and the data download is uh, in a zip format. That file has to be opened using this offline tool. Again, from that you can create Excel tool, Excel file from the data. In that Excel you can do the modifications and upload that Excel file in the offline tool. It will create JSON file. That file can be uploaded on our website. Okay. That is, as far as GSTR 1 is concerned, that is the basic things, very few basic things I covered. Most of you are familiar because for the last one year you are filing the returns. GSTR 3B, it is a simplified return uh, alternative to GSTR 3 return because GSTR 3 we are not able to file because of uh, non-filing of 2A, 2 and 1A. We are using GSTR 3B. This 3B has to be filed by 20th of the subsequent month. So that is the payment date also. Payment also should be made by 20th. So, there are multiple tables in GSTR 3B also. 
3.1 is details of outward supplies and inward supplies liable for reverse charge payment. Okay, and 3.2, out of the outward supplies made in 3.1, 3.2 covers interested supplies made to unregistered persons, composition dealers and UIN holders, special registrants. All these three are covered in 3.2. Four is the ITC, eligible ITC, ITC liable for, uh, to be reversed and uh, ineligible ITC, all those covered in table four. Five is regarding this value of uh, exempt goods related non-GST supplies also and 5.1 deal with interest and late payment. Six is the uh, table where we actually pay the tax and seven is TDS, TCS, TDS, TTS, section 51, 52, they have not come into force. And, okay, these are the due dates. So, IGST amount to be entered in 3.2. It is very important. Still, people are particularly exporters. They are suffering a lot because of uh, uh, this uh, error. There are 3.1A, 3.1B, 3.1C. There are three um, subtables in 3.1. 3.1 deals with normal outward clearances. 3.1B deals with zero rated supplies made exports or supplies made to SCZ. That means IGST payment you have to make. That IGST payment comes in 3.1b. If you are clearing, if you are supplying any goods for export on payment of IGST, for example, I am exporting goods to America worth rupees 1 crore rupees. And that I have paid, let us say, 18% IGST and kunte, 18 lakhs I will pay that. That 18 lakhs I have to mention in 3.1b. What happened if I don't mention in 3.1b? Instead, since I have paid the duty, I will mention 3.1a. This data is communicated to ISCAT, custom systems. When the data is communicated to custom systems, it doesn't show 3.1b. That means IGST paid on zero rated supplies, it doesn't show. When it doesn't show to the IGST, uh, the ISCAT portal, the exports you have made in customs, you will get the refund automatically. If you show the amount in 3.1b, that will match with the ISCAT export data. If the amount is tallied, of course, subject to other conditions like filing of uh, um, export general manifest and uh, shipping bill, filing of GSTR 1 and GSTR 3b. Subject to these conditions, the refund, uh, refund amount will be automatically credited to your bank. What happens if you don't mention the uh, amount in 3.1b, System thinks that you have not paid duty. Do you have mentioned in the shipping bill and export invoice that the export is on payment of IGST, you have not paid the duty. When you have not paid the duty, it will not give the refund to you. Isn't it? Still, people are um, committing these errors. Please uh, take care while filing the GSTR 3B return. You see, in GSTR 1, we are mentioning that uh, uh, supplies against uh, IGST payment or interest rate. Uh, Payment, na? IGST payment, export, interstate supplies or export supplies. This 3.1B amount should tally with that or it should be little more than that. It should not be less than the IGST values mentioned in GSTR 3, um, GSTR 1. That is also very important. That is what it says. See, none of the export invoices will be processed. And the export invoice will be processed for transmission to ICGATE if correct IGST amount is not mentioned, mentioned in 3.1b. Okay. So once you log in and start this GSTR 3b return, it will be the first screen, it will give general instructions. So uh, once you enter CGST amount, automatically state uh, GST or UTGST amount will be automatically populated. And now you, there is no need for submission of the form. You can enter the data, save the data and log out. And tomorrow or day after or three days again you can log in and you continue. It is not like that earlier once you submit it you cannot modify the data. Now there is no submission, submit procedure. Just you enter, you save and you can continue. Till you file the return you can modify the data, you can save the return any number of times. And you can download the, you can preview the return also. As far as the um, as, uh, data entered by you is concerned, you can download and see the data. These are all the instructions given here. You just you go through that. Once you go through that, next month you need not to see the instructions again. You click on OK button and the afterwards a list of questions are list, uh, given there. So you need to answer yes or no. Only there are two options for each other question. Yes or no. We will see those questions also. After filling the questions, you have to click on next button. 
it will go it will take us to the actual tables where you have to enter the data if it is a nil return you need not uh, enter yes 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 you just you say nil return yes then it will it will enable filing return okay so these are the question you see if it is a nil return battery hai so it is a nil return you click yes here all will be disabled click on next button return will be filed easily if it is not nil return click if you have the outdoor supplies you click here if you have supplies to composition dealers and non registered person you click here or no depending upon the options given here the tables will be concerned tables will be populated concerned tables will be populated so these are the actual tables once you log in after clicking next you'll be given this uh, the, you have to select the financial year and then month you have to select so gstr 3b you click on prepare online of course offline tool is also there offline tool is also available but if the number of entries are less na of course there are no invoice entry you have to make only values and duties only you will be entering so click on this uh, prepare online and the tables will be opened the depending on the options given by you in the first screen tables will be those tables will be opened after entering all the details any, anything okay so after entering all the details when you go to the payment screen it will automatically say how much duty you have to pay and how much credit you have in your credit ledgers it will automatically adjust that credit and balance anything to be payable that will be shown in the to be paid in cash in the cash column tax liabilities as declared in the return along with credits gets updated as our um liability as our eligibility for the credit in the credit ledger that will be shown automatically uh, for example let us say i have to pay 1 lakh uh, cg 1 lakh cgst and i have a credit of 60000 in my credit ledger it will be just 60000 of course uh, the system has not yet come the system error system fully is fully implemented it will check whether any errors are also payable by the tax payer and that will also be adjusted so balance amount will be populated in the paid through cash cash column and when you hover your mouse hovering means just you move the mouse on the text box it will say how much balance you have in the credit ledger and cash ledgers you need not go to the ledgers again and see okay for example you see if available cash balance in my cash ledger is let us say one less than the amount required to offset the liabilities for example 1 lakh i have to pay 60000 i have the credit no problem 60000 it will be adjusted balance 40000 i have to pay through cash again i have a balance of 20000 in my cash ledger that 20000 will be shown in the paid through cash and balance 20000 will be payable column it will show additional cash required for payment from that we can directly click on create chalan again we need not go to services create chalan and enter the amounts everything here itself we can click on create chalan it will create the chalan we can go for payment process scenario 2 for example if i have the more cash balance in my cash ledger no problem there is no need for creating the chalan it will not show in the additional cash required column okay once you click make payment and post credit to ledger button and pay off the lib- after entering all the details payment is set up you have to click on the make payment if the cash is to be paid if nothing is to be that means create a chalan has to be created click on make payment there is nothing the balance available in credit and cash ledger are sufficient then straight away you can go to post credit to ledger button and pay off liabilities will be adjusted and your return will be filed once you file the return you cannot make any changes to the return only only thing you can make good in the next month subsequent month return okay this is the after payment is made it will go to the screen there you have to select the you have to check this declaration and select the other signatory and you have you can preview it and file through electronic verification code or digital signature certificate okay 
it will give a warning, you can click on proceed, it will send the OTP, in case of electronic verification code, it will send the OTP to the mail as well as your mobile number. So you can use that, you can send that and filing is successful. Okay? If you go to the return dashboard again, it will show the status as filed. It will show the status as filed. This is the ESR 3B and 3B also we have um, offline tool. This is not a application like uh, GSTR1 offline tool. It is purely an Excel tool. You can easily use that. Okay. So other written GSTR4 is for the composition levy. The due date is for 18th of the subse uh, subsequent quarter. 18th of the month subsequent to the quarter. For example, April to June. We have to file by 18th July. Okay. These, here table 4 to 9 have to be filled using offline tool only. You cannot file online. Sorry. So table 10 onwards, they relate to payment and you can use online. So table 4A, these are the auto-populated details. Details are filled from just 1, 5 and 7. And the, for 4 also you have the offline tool. I told you now, up to table 9 you have to use offline tool only. GSTR 4 is for non-taxable person. The due date is for 20th. This is a monthly return. This is not for This is a monthly return. And GSTR 5 is again the it's not non-taxable person. YDR online information and database access retrieval service for those people. Table 5A and Table 6 is for the ISG input service distributor. This is also a monthly return and it has to be filed by 10th of the subsequent month. Between 10th and 13th, because originally it was intended that GSR2 has to be filed by 15th, so this is written was uh, directed, mandated to be filed by 13th, so that by 15th the data will be populated into GSR2. So GSR6A, uh, this is also again not adopted for, from GSR1 for ISD purpose. So 7 and 7A, 7 is for the TDS and 7A is for the TDS certificate. TDS is certificate, TDS written is filed mostly by the government departments. For example, uh, ours is a government department, if I am purchasing let us say 10 lakhs worth of furniture to our department. When, I, when we pay the amount 10 lakhs to the supplier, we have to deduct under section 52, we have to deduct 2% of the value. That 2% we will pay to the GST department online by filing our own return and a certificate will be issued to the supplier under GSTR 7A. The 2% amount will be credited to the supplier's cash ledger, not the credit ledger. It will be credited to his cash ledger. He can use it for payment of his GST. Similarly, under section 51, TCS, like e-commerce operators, they have to collect 2% from the suppliers through e-commerce operator. They have to pay. This section 51 and 52 have not come into force and uh, sections are there, that is all. And people are taking registration, but uh, they have not implemented it. So GSTR 9 is uh, annual return. I told you, na, annual return by, it has to be filed by 31st December, subsequent to the closing of financial year. There are different types of annual returns. GSTR 9 is for the regular taxpayers. 9A is for the compounding taxpayers. 9B is for e-commerce operators. And 9C is for, 9C is the auditor certificate. Taxable persons whose turnover is more than 2 crores has to get their accounts audited under section 35.5 under section 35.5 of CGSTR and that, uh, that uh, audit report has to be filed in GSTR 9C. This is the due date is 31st December. Okay. And GSTR 3 is the final return. It has to be filed within 90 days from the date of cancellation. Okay. GSTR 11. Okay. When this uh, 11 is filed by the Special registrations, UN holders, they cannot, this, this is totally 100% auto-populated auto return, they cannot do any modification. Any duty paid by the suppliers is auto-populated in GSTR 11, that amount will be refunded to those special agencies. That return is filed quarterly basis. This is also important, the company, uh, the digital signature is mandatory, especially for 3B. I think three, uh, GSTR 1, I think it is allowing uh, with the OTP also. Some people told me, I have not seen that. So, so for all the other categories of registration, they can use either DGS, uh, this digital signature or electronic verification code. That is, uh, the mobile registered with, linked with other, they will get the OTP or normal OTP. In either of these uh, facilities, you can file the returns.
you have to maintain the, uh, this. once you register the department three registers are automatically created one is electron liability register second is electron credit ledger third is electron cash ledger they are all no problem i think you are uh, you are all familiar with those three registers yes. Chalan payment modes there is uh, intended so we will uh, wait for some more days they will implement it net banking anybody everybody knows that like we do shopping online shopping we will pay the gst also for the counter you can pay this um, amount directly in the bank counter if the amount payable is less less than 10000 less than 10000 you have to create chalan you have to take a print out of the chalan and take it to the bank they will accept the cash in case of any neft and rtgs you have to take a print out of the chalan along with chalan it will also generate a mandate form that form also you have to take a print out and both the forms you have to take to the bank you give the check that will send it to the rbi once rbi accepts your cash ledger will be populated. So interest is 18 percent under section 51 that is for normal um, delay. In case of uh, section 53 interest is 24 percent mostly that is mismatching of the credit. When the credit is mismatched you have to pay 24 percent interest under section 50 subsection 3. Okay, no? So late filing uh, July, August, September it is waived. Afterwards, the uh, act says it is 200 rupees. Out of not with notification, and uh, notification number 64 of uh, 2017, it is made 50 rupees. 25 to central government, 25 to state government. In case of new return, it is 20 rupees only. This is as far as returns are concerned. We will briefly see EAB also.